Hi, I'm Eddie of Eddie's Reef Aquaria. Today's video is going to be on my favorite topic, which is corals and acclimation. So what I'm going to talk about, first of all, I'm going to try to answer the basic question. Do you actually really need to acclimate corals? And then the second question that I'm going to try to answer is how long do you actually need uh, to see the results that the coral is happy and is fully acclimated? To your actual tank you know to its new home its new environment besides that as i go along and explain and try to answer these two questions i'm going to target specific corals that i know that are fully acclimated and i'm going to show you how to observe uh, the the pointers that you'll see hey look it's acclimated it's growing a, a specific thing that you should know when it comes to frags so before we go into it I hope you enjoyed the video, but don't forget to hit the like button, uh, to subscribe to my channel, and smash that notification bell. So let's take a deep dive into this video and check it out. Hold on. Okay, so here we are in front of the tank. And the first question that I'm going to address, that I'm going to answer is, do you need to acclimate corals? Okay. Now, you do not need to acclimate corals, but, but what I'm referring to is the, the drip method. When you go ahead and you purchase your new frags or colonies and you bring them to your new home, their new home, you know, your uh, reef aquarium, you do not de need to drip, uh, water drip the uh, corals again you do not need to acclimate them by dripping dripping water and then you know uh, once the water is double the amount then you put them in that's only like let's say for fish and for inverts and on and on but corals whether it's frags whether it's colonies you do not need to use the drip method now you do have to acclimate them in a in a way and uh, by what I mean by that, I'm going to get a, a closer up shot, but on the lower left hand corner, right, I'd say right about, okay, right there, there's two new frags, SPS frags, that I got from Worldwide Corals. Okay, now, the rule of thumb, again, by research, people that have followed me for many years know me that my nickname is Eddie the Researcher. I ask questions. Uh, I research on Google and besides my own personal experience which I've been doing this for many many years so what you should do is when you get your new corals again you do not need to acclimate them with a drip method like you would do fish and all that but what you should do is like what I'm showing you there you should put them uh, on the substrate or you know if you're not using sand on, on the uh, bare bottom on the bottom I would say for one or two weeks. Why do you have to do this? Well, that's mainly so that those frags, uh, upon arriving at your um, reef tank, they have to get used to the intensity of, of the light. They have to get used to your water parameters, temperature, and on and on. You know, I mean, no matter if you try to, uh, try to duplicate uh, from the pet shop, well, the LFS that you got, the corals you still I highly recommend that you should do that and a perfect example of what can happen is with the Monty cap okay I have a Monty cap right there which again I'm going to show you on a closer shot okay that's the SPS coral okay you you come here with your new Monty cap prior to that Monty cap I had bought another Monty cap so what did I do? I did not do the drip method. You do not need it. I acclimated it, but I mean by putting it on the, uh, on the tank, uh, but the mistake that I did is that I put it where I actually want it. Right there. I'm going to go ahead and put it at a specific place. As a matter of fact, I'll more or less tell you where I put the first uh, frag. It was right around where, where the cloth polyps is, around there. Okay, what happened is that since I didn't acclimate it to the lights, uh, 
given like uh, a couple of days, wow, it's beautiful, it's gonna start to grow. No way, it started to bleach, bleach, and it died. Because it was, you know, it was too much uh, light uh, for that coral when it came to the lighting acclimation, shall we call it. So that's why the, the rule of thumb is that when you get your new acquired frags or colonies, you should put them on the bottom. And I would say one to two weeks. To play it safe, two weeks. Now, going to the light part. If by any chance you have lights that you can go ahead and program uh, acclimation like this one. This is a Radeon uh, XR15 uh, Pro. If, if you have that feature, you can go ahead uh, which I, I have done it in other occasions where you acclimate it for six weeks and then you actually put but now what I'm uh, what I'm explaining to you is the the brightness of uh, the light not the individual lights but because these lights and other similar lights are not only do you have the individual colors but you have the total brightness uh, this one I, I have it at 75% at brightness so what you do is uh, let's say you got corals uh, like these two frags that I'm going to show you now on a closer shot and uh, you don't want to go through this process of putting them on the substrate and all that then you can actually use the acclimation um, feature on these lights and you program it for six weeks you you put where you want the the light schedule to actually start and then it will start by increments I'm talking about every day it will be like one, one and a half, two percent, and it will keep going up and up and up until the desired brightness that you want with these uh, LEDs. And I'm pretty sure that there's uh, other lights uh, that have the same feature. So you can go that route, or you can go this this route, which is the most common. You know, not everybody, of course, has radiance, uh, radiance. I'm sorry, and and lights to have the acclimation feature. So you can uh, do this, which is uh, what I'm doing. Whether I have the acclimation feature or not, this time I decided not to use it. So you just put them on the bottom. Uh, give it one or two weeks, and then you can go ahead and start to uh, raise them. Either halfway, if it's an LPS or, or a softy or whatever, or if it's an acro, then you, you can go, go ahead and try and bring it up to your desired area. But just always keep an eye on it. So now what we're going to do is, I'm going to go closer to these two frags and I'm, I'm going to show you something that I observed already from uh, the intro to now. Hold on one second. Okay, so here we are focusing at the new acquisitions that I made from Worldwide Corals, these two SPS frags. The one on the left, the name of it is Hydnopora. And then on the right is the common, uh, well-known green slimer. Now, if you look, if you go back to my intro, you know how I usually, people that follow me a lot know my style where I go ahead and I shoot a, a couple of different shots and I do some special effects and sometimes I'll put little titles and all that and then I go into the intro. Hi, this is Eddie Avedis with Korea, blah, 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 and I go on. Okay, if you go back, to the, to the picture, to that first intro video, and you look at the uh, Hynopora, the one here on the left, okay, that was taken, I'd say about two, yeah, two days ago. Now, if, if you look at that picture, of course, I, I had moved it around to shoot the, uh, you know, those intro shots, so the polyps kind of like closed uh, a little bit. I, I waited a little time to start shooting those intro shots that you see that I usually do. But then if you look at it now, you're going to notice that the individual polyps are opening more and more and more. And then the same thing goes for the, the green slimer. Uh, you're going to notice that uh, if you look at that shot and you look at this, you know, now I'm, I'm shooting this video uh, two and a half days pass from those shots that I actually did because I really don't do my videos on one shot. I, I do the intros and then I, I do my research and then I go ahead and I do the outro and then I do what I'm doing now which is the, the actually main video. So not everything, is, when you see my videos they're not all shot the same day. I do it 
in different segments, uh, different days, and then the special effects and all that. So if you go back to that intro shot of these, and you look at this now, you're going to notice there's a slight, slight difference that the polyps are starting to open more and to extend. So that's what I mean going back to the topic of acclimation. Uh, you should always put them, no matter if it's uh, frags like this or colonies, you should put them on the bottom and wait. Wait like one or two weeks. I, I, I give it the benefit of the doubt and I wait two weeks. So it gets, like I said, I know I'm repeating myself, but I just want to get this message through. It's very important. So uh, it, they'll get used to your brightness, your light brightness, and then your water parameters and the temperature. And then you're going to notice that each day that passes or a couple of days, uh, you're going to notice a slight, if you keep observing the, the coral or take pictures of it each day, you're going to notice that, hey, look, the, the polyps are starting to open. They're more extended. They're more... Um, elongated. So that's something that I thought I'd bring up when it, when it came uh, to these frags. Now I'm, I'm going to go to the next question which, which is how long does it actually take for a coral to acclimate? You know once you do this process and you put it where you know you glue it where you want to actually keep it, okay from then on how long does it actually take for the coral to actually uh, fully acclimate and now I'm going to show you two corals okay now this coral shall we call it a gorgonium uh, I bought this at uh, Black Friday last year I bought it of course being you know quote unquote a coral uh, I that uh, this I really didn't have to acclimate it too much but just in case I put it on the substrate I waited like about a week and more or less, I had it in the middle back of the tank. Then I put it here, there. And here where, where I'm, I placed it, it kind of likes it. But for me to see what you guys are seeing now, that all the, um, the feelers, the polyps are out, I'm not exaggerating. It took weeks. From Black Friday, I would say close to the end of the year, or maybe like after Christmas, that's when I started to see the polyps start to open. Now, what am I trying to pass along? Um, what I'm trying to say is that going back, once you acclimate the corals on the substrate or bare bottom and all that, and you bring them up, not necessarily does it curtail that it's fully acclimated. Sometimes acclimation to see what you're seeing now and what I saw before, it might take weeks and it might take even months for a coral to actually uh, feel comfortable, used to the parameters, temperature, and open up and flourish like you're seeing the Gorgonian is happy. Uh, sometimes there's a little algae. Uh, I go ahead I, with a, a toothbrush that's dedicated for the tank. I'll take it off. And if not, I go in with my fingers and I take it off and that little section will only close and immediately it opens up. And I'm talking about, again, as I said, I got this Gorgonian on Black Friday. And around Christmas or after Christmas, that's when it started to open. And now it's completely open. So this is an example of how long, when it comes to the question, how long does it actually, a uh, coral take to actually be fully acclimated. This is a perfect example. Okay, and then now I want to draw your attention to these two specific corals. Fire Digi and this coral on the front. Okay, these two are fully acclimated. Okay, now how, did I, how can I uh, say that? Okay, the Fire Digi on the back was a little flat frag, I'd say like up to there, a frag, just there. Now, if you notice closely, if you notice closely, not only did it start to elongate, but it actually continued to uh, frag out, extend out of the, of the plug, and now 
it's already on the rock work and other little points are coming out. Okay, when you see that, what you're seeing there, and you see it on a coral, that coral, trust me, has been fully acclimated to all your parameters, to your light brightness, et cetera, et cetera. The same thing holds true with the coral on the, on the front. This one was, I think it was two or three little frags about uh, up to here. It's got these. These have, uh, this was actually like a, uh, I'd say like a, a, a little Y right here. It was like a little Y. It's a, it separated, came out. There was a little section here. And this, you could barely see it. It broke off and now they're coming off. I mean, they're, they're taking off. That's another sign of a fully acclimated coral. Now, you might ask me, well, Eddie, in reference to what you told me with the Gorgonia, well, what about these? Okay, the fire digi, for me to see this, I would say it's been uh, easily, uh, I would say from two to three or four months easily. Of course, uh, the component you have to add to this is not only acclimation, but you know that the coral is actually growing because of my parameters and what I put in the water, replenish, on and on and on. You know, but that is a sign that the coral is fully acclimated. It uh, again, like I said, with a fire digi on the back, it not only started to take off, but it actually started to grow off the plug, and it's and it's got other little points off. So uh, not only shall we call it is fully acclimated, but upon you know having the coral fully uh, acclimated. It's growing and growing and growing. And the same thing holds true for the coral on the front. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video, found it interesting and educational and fun. Of course, like I said before, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, hit the like button and smash that notification bell. And like I say at the end, happy reefing, thanks for watching and until next time.